Well, we begin in southern Lebanon, where at least three civilians have been killed in a wave of Israeli strikes. The Israeli military is launching retaliatory attacks after one of its soldiers was killed by rocket fire from Lebanon on Wednesday. Eight other people were also injured in that barrage. Now, earlier, the Israeli army said it bombed Hezbollah positions overnight. For more, let's speak to our correspondent, Zainal Khodat. She's across this for us from Beirut. Zaina, talk us through what we're seeing. How seriously should we regard this escalation? Well, it is being described as the biggest escalation in the ongoing confrontation between the Israeli army and the Lebanese armed group Hezbollah. Israel retaliated by carrying out a series of airstrikes in southern Lebanon in a number of um, villages across southern Lebanon outside the battleground. Now, the battleground has been along the 120-kilometer uh, border, some four to five kilometers depth on each side. But Israel striking deeper. It's not the first time, but the the series of strikes, the ferocity of the attacks, and the very fact that civilians have been killed. Now, it's not the first time civilians have been killed since the start of this conflict, but at least three have been killed when their house was targeted. So is Israel no longer um, respecting the rules of engagement, operating outside the rules of engagement that both sides really have been treading carefully. Um, in the past, yes, they have targeted homes, but it was usually Hezbollah fighters who were killed in those strikes. So now a woman, uh, two children in one home, and we're getting reports of another casualty in, in another home. Now, Israel says that this is in reprisal to uh, violent bombing. That's the way they're describing it. Violent bombing by Hezbollah on northern Israel. Hezbollah did target Israel's main um, command headquarters, the northern command headquarters in Safad, and that's deep inside Israel, some 15 kilometers, and they killed an Israeli soldier. Hezbollah did this really as a message of deterrence, because as of late, Israel really has been stepping up its attacks and, and its threats, and Israel now retaliating. Now, this cycle of violence um, will... Will this escalation continue or with each side, you know, give a, a message to this, each side and, and this round will be over and we go back to the rules of engagement? It is hard to say, but no doubt, um, you know, the situation is tense in South Lebanon. People in Lebanon are worried because clearly this conflict has widened. Zena Khoda there across all of that for us from the Lebanese capital, Beirut. Thank you, Zena. Well, let's now bring in Elijah Magnier. He is a military and a political analyst. He joins me now from Brussels. Elijah, as Zaina was just saying, up until this point, this had all seemingly been carefully calibrated. It was within the rules of engagement. Has that now been broken? And if so, where does this end? Yes, it has, because we have seen several hits north of the Litani River that the Israelis are asking Hezbollah to withdraw behind the uh, Litani River. So. It, Israel is hitting several villages that are considered uh, very sensitive, like Nabati, like Jibshi, and it is also hitting other villages that have not been hit before. So it is an escalation, and I think Hezbollah will respond by the same intensity of the bombardment, but without enlarging too much the war. And what I mean without enlarging, it means respecting more or less the limit of the engagement, but not going into an all-out war, and which is not also in the interest of the Israelis, because then if they go to villages like Tyre and Nabatigi, they have to include Haifa on the other side, and we're talking about one million Israeli becoming refugee. Not to mention wars on multiple fronts. Let me ask you about timing, Elijah. This, as we say, appears to be an escalation, just as Israel is also planning its ground offensive in Rafah. Should we read anything into that? Well, the war in Rafah is really decision. It is not going to increase the battle on the Lebanese front, but it is going to increase the battle on other fronts, like in Yemen and Iraq, where the, both members of the axis of the resistance will escalate further. But again, it's Netanyahu who really need to remain in this war, to go and attack Rafah, and after that, to go on the, around the negotiation table. He, if he stops, the only thing that he has achieved now is only to destroy Gaza. But he has not deterred Hamas. He has not defeated Hamas. And he knows he can't release 
all the prisoners by military means, regardless of the release of two only prisoners out of 131. So again, Netanyahu needs to stay in power. And for that, it is in his intention and his uh, advantage to remain in a state of war against Rafah, against Gaza, and also against Lebanon, but within certain measure that it doesn't go out of his control. Let me press you a little bit, Elijah, on, on what some of the other powers are thinking. You mentioned that you, you don't see necessarily an escalation because of Rafah on this border, but you potentially see that elsewhere. So what is Tehran's calculus then here on the Lebanese border? Is this about solidarity or is there a broader strategic objective? It is only solidarity and to keep a part of the Israeli forces engaged. It is not in the plan of the Israeli army to start an invasion in Lebanon because they can't. Uh, Hezbollah uh, has much more capability than Hamas. Or the, the borders between Hezbollah and Syria, Iran, Iraq are all available and open. Uh, Hezbollah has sophisticated weapons that have not been used so far. Israel is aware of that and is also aware that there is no way the Israeli settlers will live in that area if the war continues and escalates. This is why what Israel can do is exactly what it's doing now, but destroying even further the villages within 5 to 20 kilometers in a way that doesn't invite Hezbollah to continue carpet bombing until reaching Haifa. This is not something that Israel can afford at the moment economically, militarily, and the Americans are really in difficulty if he dragged them into another mm -hmm. front with Lebanon. So you're saying Israel can't afford a conflict here, Lebanon can't afford one either. So I've been curious then, how is Hezbollah and its Iranian links viewed in Lebanon right now? Well, for the moment, uh, as it happened before, there are contacts through the United Nations to de-escalate when things go out of hand. So today, both sides will escalate, and they have, and they're doing it. Hezbollah will continue engaging. and. Israel has already occupied most of Gaza, not controlled, but occupied, and it has the intention to occupy Rafah because the Americans said, you can't do that unless you have a plan. And Netanyahu said, he has a plan. So he has the green light for Rafah. But that is not going to push Hezbollah to enlarge the war, but to destroy more within the rule of engagement, even if Israel, Israel prestige has been severely hit in this war on the Lebanese front and on Gaza front. So we expect this calibrated tit-for-tat to continue. Elijah Magnier, a military and political analyst speaking to us there from Brussels. Thanks for sharing your thoughts and expertise with us on Al Jazeera, Elijah. Thank you.